Hey Doc, we need an update. The black soldier fly farming. How is it going? Well, guys, this is how it's going. I've been getting lots of screams <laughs> in the comment section of you guys wanting to find out how the black soldier fly, the maggots, are doing. And yeah, it's been going on, guys. These things really take some time. I thought it would be like quick, 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 quick. But the life cycle is probably over 35 days. So it's quite some time before they reproduce. The good thing is that when they do reproduce, they reproduce in numbers. So I'm going to be showing you guys around. I know you can see the love nests there and you can see the flies inside. But it's quite disorganized over here. I'm doing quite lots of things. I know you can see there's some soil here. Let me just show you guys around quick before we do the black soldier flies. So right here at this point, um, we are trying to dig a hole. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, we are digging a hole here, and it's because I'm going to be putting a very huge tank right here. Yeah, I'm going to be putting a very huge tank. Tank. I got guys to get for me some stones. These stones and a number of stones over there. Those are stones that we're going to be using to fill uh, this hole. When we put the tank up uh, and the tank is really important because uh, as you guys might know before in the past i was using the more manual drinkers and right now i'm changing trying to get everything uh to automatic yeah so right here i don't know if you guys can see this is my stand for the tank yeah so this is what i'm going to be using for the tank it's quite big um quite big and it was a bit expensive uh, it might be hard to understand the vastness of it from here, but it's going to be carrying two tanks, one at the top and one in the middle ground. And I'm going to be placing it just below the chicken house. Uh, and that's because I want it to carry water, one for the upper floor and one for the lower floor. Each tank is going to be a thousand liters. So one for the upper floor, one for the lower floor. So I'm going to get them here into this hole, fill this hole with some kind of concrete or things like that so that it's supported. Then we shall connect the automatic drinkers so that I get done with the whole thing of having to change water, you know, each and every day, each and every hour. It gets quite hard, you know, when you're beginning, it's cost effective, but it's very tiresome. So it's okay to start out with, but you know, you can't keep that way forever. With time, you need to move out of it. And then the vegetation here is really overgrown, like really, really overgrown. Um, I need to work on this. I think just due to the fact that the geese left the farm, if you didn't know, or if you haven't been following the channel for some time, I took the geese to my uncle's farm, which actually has fish ponds, and the geese are chilling out there. They love it there more because there's lots of water and all that kind of stuff. I'll probably return them here, you know, sometime later. But yeah, that's it. Then right here, there's something I've been constructing. This, yeah? Uh, it has been framed out. And it's something really, really good. I, I believe it's really going to help me. This is going to be the place where I do the processing for the black soldier flies. So I just framed it out with wooden poles. And I'm going to put tarpaulin. I hope you guys know what tarpaulin is, yeah? I'm going to put tarpaulin on the side of it. And then I'm going to use some kind of polythene or transparent iron sheet to cover the roof. Because we need all the sunlight that we can get through it. Because... The flies, the black soldier flies, for some reason, just can't survive without sunshine. Well, they can survive, but they won't give you eggs. And if you're keeping the flies, what you need are the eggs, because from the eggs, you're going to be able to grow the larvae. So that's the update of what's happening around on my farm. Okay, guys, so here are the love cages once again. And forgive my, you know, uh, patched up house for the black soldier flies. Uh, like I told you guys, this was just testing things out. Over there, like I've just shown you, I'm trying to construct something that's a bit more permanent and I hope it will do better. But this which I made here has been able to work. All I need is something that works, yeah? That's all I needed to be able to test the theory out. And I have proven that the theory works, yeah? So if you haven't been through this or if you haven't seen this before, guys, these are the stands. And then these nets have the black soldier flies, you know. During the mornings, when there's not too much sunlight, they don't really fly, you know. If I just tap them, they'll just fall down. But you can see them resting on the sides. Let me get this out of the way. Okay. So you can see them resting on the sides of the nets. 
and they're just waiting for the sunlight to come out and then they will get active. So the last time I had just one of the love nests, this, but then now I have two. I have this and the other one. And that's been a good thing. And the two different cages have taught me quite a story, yeah? You guys remember the maggots I had the last time I made a video about black soldier fly farming? These are the maggots right now. They are flies, yeah? So they managed to pupate, and after becoming pupa, they became the maggots. And I don't know if you guys know what pupa are. Yeah. Let me probably get out a few. So guys, this is pupa. Pupa is like the dormant stage of the fly. It's the dormant stage. The stage that doesn't move, it's the pupa. So when the maggot feeds, it will become pupa. After some days, the pupa emerges as a fly. So what happens is that I just put the pupa in here on the floor, and then after some days, they will emerge as flies. There are different mechanisms that are used. But I found out that for me, at the moment, this is what works easiest, based on the resources that I have and the time that I have to do what I can do. So one thing I've noticed, guys, is that the attractant you use inside the love nest is so super important. I didn't think I didn't know how exactly important it was. So what happens is that you have to get the black soldier fly to lay eggs, yeah? But getting them to lay eggs is is not easy. I I get so many people sending me messages and they're like, "How do you get them to lay eggs? You know, mine just keep dying." If you don't know, guys, these black soldier flies are made to reproduce, you know? I think God created them just to reproduce. Once the male mates, it dies. Once the female lays eggs, it dies. So they are really just meant to be able to provide us with larvae that are meant to decompose stuff. And this is really good. I love that. So over time, this population is going to just keep falling and falling and falling of the flies until we get down to zero. But if you don't put a very good attractant for the flies to lay eggs, they're not going to lay eggs. And then, you know, their lifetime will just pass by and they will die. So what happens is that you put the attractant in a bowel, something like this, yeah? Uh, and in the past, I was using pig poop. But after some time, I would keep checking and I noticed there were no eggs being laid. I was like, what's going on? And then I decided to use chicken poop in just one of the bowels. I have two bowels in here and two in the other one. In one of the bowels, I decided to use chicken poop. And after like a day, I came and checked and only the cardboard boxes like this that were in over that bowel had um, eggs. I was like, oh my God, I think it's the attractant. So I decided to change the attractant in all of them. And guys, now I have eggs being laid everywhere in all, all of them. So the attractant is very, very important because what happens is that these flies want to lay their eggs in a place where if and when the larvae hatch, they already have food available. So they just want the larvae to hatch and then boom, they fall right into the food and they start feeding. And I think chicken pop and that smell is like the most pleasing thing to them, interestingly. So yesterday evening, I came and collected, you know, some of the eggs. I got out the cardboards that had eggs. Um, you guys won't see, yeah? But if you look at this cardboard, it has some eggs on it. I don't know if you, you're able to see it, yeah? It has some eggs on it and... So I got them out and I put them in different bials. Yeah. And inside this bile is something interesting. I was told that the best thing to use is fermented, fermented, you know, fermented brewer's yeast, something like that. But at the moment I can't access that. So I decided to just use chicken feed. Yeah, chicken feed, feed that has been mixed. Just got it, mixed it with water, and I put this in here. So my hope is that when these things hatch, uh, they will just when the eggs hatch, they're just going to move into the chicken feed, feed on the chicken feed, and then they will start growing up as maggots. Then after some time, I'll be able to transfer them into bigger containers. So I, have around, I collected around three of these, and then I still put new ones inside there. So I just use cardboard boxes, yeah? Guys, I have cardboard boxes like this. I also have wooden pieces just like this. And these are called the eggies, guys. These are called the eggies. You just put a thumbnail in between here, put them together, put a rubber band around. If you look inside my love nest, you'll see some of them are exactly like this. Then others are simply from cardboard, you know, just keep cutting cardboard. I have very easy access to cardboard. I know one of the biggest problems with using cardboard is that 
it's not sustainable. Are you going to be getting tons and tons of cardboard? But for me, I have very easy access to cardboard. So it's easy for me to use cardboard. Uh, and then it's also, I feel like, it's a little bit better in that you don't have to handle the eggs in any way. You know, if you're going to be using a piece of wood, you have to slide off the eggs and that could damage some of them. But for the cardboard, you just get it, put it where your, you know, food is for the larvae. So when they creep out, all of them, when they creep out, they are likely to hatch and grow. But if you're scratching these off the pieces of wood, some of them could just, you know, get damaged from the force and all that kind of stuff. So I'm using both the cardboard and both the pieces of wood in both the love nests. This love nest has more flies than the other one because the other one came out before. And so now the population is already decreasing in the other love nest. And then the other thing that I'm doing is that if you look at the bottom here, I don't know if you guys can see. I've put a few cans, you know, tins in which I've put oil uh, inside them. The idea is that you don't want any insects to be able to creep up these love cages. And, and go there because I want to start feeding on the flies once they discover that there are flies in there They're going to attack them start feeding on them So you put you know some kind of can or tin put oil in it or water um, So that insects can move through and then the place is safe Then finally I have another lot of the maggots that are still growing They haven't yet started to pupate. So let's just go check them out um Hopefully they are growing well. I want to show them to you guys because that's going to be the next, you know, um, generation. They're going to be the ones to pupate and then they will be the ones we shall be putting in the love cage. So let's go check them out. All right, guys. So here we are. These are not the lightest of things. And I don't know if you guys will be able to see very clearly. Because in here, we were using quite a number of things. One of them was the pig waste. Another was chicken waste. Used very many materials. Um... And I think I haven't been monitoring them well enough. I've been quite busy the past few weeks. So the feeding was quite haphazard and all that kind of stuff. But right in here, you can see the larvae. They're in here. They're moving. I can see that some of them have already started to pupate. And that's a good thing. Though it's also, it makes it a bit complex because uh, that means they are pupating at different times. So you don't know, you know when you're going to carry them off, put them inside the love nest. Others will pupate before the others. So yeah, but in here you can see um, the, the larvae, they are moving. Um, they have been decomposing the waste in here. And this waste is very, very good. Like we're going to be using it as fertilizer. You know, I'm going to be using it as compost in my, you know, not dig gardens. So I'm very glad to see this. And I'm excited about this black soldier fly farming. Um, seems like it's working out well for me better than i had actually thought i believe i'm going to pursue it and it's going to be very cheap chicken feed for my new birds that are going to be coming in soon hopefully it will work out guys i'm really hoping it will work out it will be good chicken feed it will be high quality chicken feed that way i can cut down on my feed costs and then see how things go if you're wondering what's happening here if you've watched videos and you haven't found out that i did sell my birds guys i sold my birds quite some time back yeah and i'm expecting a new lot of birds very very soon uh they'll be going up on the upper floor then i'll be getting other birds for this floor soon after that so i'm really excited about what's going to be happening on the farm there's building out the new farm it's exciting times guys otherwise thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't subscribed hit the notification bell that way you never miss out on an upload don't forget to smash the like button share this video with your friends and in case you have any questions leave them in the comment section below lots of love bye bye